Hey, welcome to. Oh, there you go. Yes, she's got to talk to us. Um, welcome to um, how to start a collaborative community for Eco Villages Australia. So I'm Andrew McLean. I'm Claire Ogden. Yeah, and, and, and Tammy. 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 Tammy's over there. We'll, we'll, we'll put her put her um, camera on later if you want. If we if we feel the need, if we wouldn't mind, um, just going around quite quickly, just sort of where you are, what project you're thinking about doing, and this sort of thing. So we might as well start with Jill on the. She's she's on the top left of my screen. So Jill, would you, if if you don't, if you want to pass, just 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 let us know, pass, and um, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's that's no, fine. No. Um, I'm happy to start. I've just got a little puppy here that I'm training, so he's he's a little bit unruly right now. Really right now. Um, so um, yeah, I have a um a group of people in Newcastle that are potentially looking to create a community together. Um, we really would prefer separate dwellings um so are thinking about going the multiple occupancy route we'd like um communal areas um but um yeah to have our own separate homes i guess to go home to so um i emailed you guys and andrew was um great in responding <laughs> to my email and saying don't do model occupancies so yeah just here really to find out um you know why and and what your thoughts are around all of that and um there's some other people from our our group on here as well so yeah i guess just seeking more understanding and more information really great thanks Jill. uh fiona or oh, doesn't look like fiona oh, yeah sorry i'm scott fiona's husband fiona's the other fiona <laughs> um it just i'm on her computer so it's saying fiona <laughs> um so yeah, we're looking at setting up, ideally setting up a small community. Um, yeah, off the grid, um, as self-sufficient as we can get it, but we're not looking at a large type. We're probably looking at like possibly four or five families. Yes. And ideally separate dwellings or communal space is similar, but separate dwellings, like maybe um, we're thinking yurts or tiny houses or something like that, but small mobile type. Which, which area? Yeah. Oh, we're in Victoria. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to add, Fiona? Fiona? That's all right. Okay, well, let, let's keep going. We've sort of got a, um, yeah. got a call. So, uh, Claire, is it Toreen? Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, we're just uh, sort of here just to sort of get some understanding of um, this project and uh, for, um, I don't know, just to gain some information, I suppose. Um, yeah, just to. That's, yeah, that's us, I suppose. Yep, no Thank worries. You. Where, are you, where are you, Toreen? Uh, we're in um, South East Queensland, uh, Ipswich. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you. Trevor? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm just after some information as well. I'm in uh, New South Wales at the moment. I'm in Port Macquarie, but I'm rent, going to be renting a place from next week in Yamba, uh, a bit further up the coast. Um, but, yeah, I'm interested in a... But it's just me I'm interested in finding a community um, to be involved with. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, we've been, we've been in the email contact, so yeah, thank you. Nice yeah. to see you. Okay, Ben and Mel. Hey, kia ora, guys. We're um, tuning in from Raglan, New Zealand. Um, we have um, been accumulating a group of people together to um, start up a community over here and um, we are yeah I guess advanced in the sense that we have got a crew together we're looking at um, centralizing our funds um, KiwiSaver superannuation and um, things that we have and um, yeah just looking at the framework of filled out all the pro forma um, documents that you've sent through 
um, for all of us. So that's been really helpful to look at all the um, the uh, potential mismatches or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just here to learn more about, um, I guess, the non-for-profit side of things and what, what would it look like coming under Eco Villages Australia if we were over here in Aotearoa. Eco Village Aotearoa, EVA, perfect. Uh, We've been able to get email contact to him, so thanks. Thanks, Ben, that's great. Cool. Uh, Jeff. Hi, guys. Met a few of you before. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, we're doing, a, I suppose, it's like Eco Villages in terms of its structure, and hopefully we'd like to jump in under your structure as well. Um, we're looking at doing it as a, basically a community farm, uh, a villa style building that people have private living quarters as such and private gardens, but it'll effectively be a, a, a larger ring fence structure that creates a protective area for growing vegetables from, you know, shielded from, from wildlife and whatever else and high winds and things like that. Uh, so it'll be, I suppose it'll be, yeah, single occupancy is, is the route we've looked at. Um, and, uh, and that's about it for the moment. Awesome. And you're the northern rivers, aren't you, Jeff? Is that right? Uh, we're, yeah, the northern, northern central New South Wales we're looking at. That's right. Um, Armadale, look, look, look. yeah, a bit north of Armadale, an hour north of Armadale. Uh, we're still looking for land. Um, we have about, I think, half a dozen uh, families already tied in. We could easily push that as high as twelve. I think eight to twelve would be a good size unit. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we're we're on the way. We're about three quarters way there with the amount of finance we need for what we want to do, and just keeping our eye out for land uh, at the same time. Okay, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Um, Paula and Ben, just be aware that we have, we've got a lot, a lot of people on, online. So, um, okay, Paula and Ben, are you? Hi, how you going? Um, here in Newcastle, and we're part of the, you know, actually forming group who want to put some land um, sharing options together. I think for me, we're mostly interested in understanding the financial side of it a little bit more, so we can understand because we would like to get alone and we want to understand a bit more how that might actually work for us and for the group and we're happy to sort of go with any kind of business structure that that needs but um yeah it's a bit bit more interested in the financial framework side of things i think for us tonight mm. yep great great thanks paul uh claire yeah how's it going um i'm james this is claire um we're part of a sort of group of about eight to 10 people. We're just sort of uh, trying to figure out as much as we can about starting our own community. So um, yeah, our friend gave us the link to the meeting. I think he's here, um, Ben, but I can't see him. Um, but yeah, we're just here to learn as much as we can and see what structures there are um, and see what works for us. Great. And we're, we're, in, we're in Southeast Creekside as well. We're in, Brisbane. in Brisbane, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Which part? North Sorry. side, north side, south side, what's up there? Um, uh, mostly on the north side, um, yeah. kind of in a, in a north, um, and we're kind of looking within a two hour driving radius of Brisbane. Oh, well, you can come, come up and visit us one day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Kerry. Kerry there, can you hear me? Sorry. I didn't catch that. Um, yeah, so I'm in Melbourne um, and there's a couple of families. So Aslan's here as well. Um, and we're in a, a Steiner community. And I mean, really, we started an exploration recently because we were just, we were in, primarily interested in affordable housing. Um, and then, so now we're just, you know, sort of broadening to um, co housing and sustainable development and. Um, yeah, anyway, we were just a bit inspired actually by, um, by your website. So just really interested to, to learn more from your experience. Great. Thank you very much, Kerry. And Kyle and Carolyn. Yeah, hey. I'm in Sydney right now. Um, but yeah, my wife and I are really early stages as well, just trying to find the community that matches with us. Um, and I also work in community housing um, with Mission Australia in community development. So working with different communities as well with my career. 
So I'm really excited to be connected to all of you. Awesome. Thanks, Carl. Uh, is that Aslan, is it? <clears throat> yeah, hi. So I'm from Melbourne as well. And uh, yeah, as Carrie mentioned, there's a few of us here who are just interested in exploring all the options for different forms of living together in new ways and uh, really at very preliminary stages. And just I'm personally really interested in your model as well from looking around a fair bit. I was quite inspired by your website and all the detailed information you had there. And so, yeah, just really at a stage where I'm feeling like I'm exploring, I'm learning and just wanting to feel out uh, what all the different options are. Great, thanks. Thank you very much and appreciate that feedback. Uh, Fiona. Or, oh, Fiona doesn't has a, have a mic working, is that correct? I don't know, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, yay, cool. <laughs> um, so I'm Scott's wife. Um, and I mean, he pretty much summed it up, but we're at the very beginning of all this. So we don't really know anything about structures. So we're just here really to learn and to see what doesn't work and to see what does work and how we can possibly make it possible down here in Nazi Victoria. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, and we're looking at um, Yarra Valley Way. We're actually also in the um, Steiner community. I don't know you, Kerry, though, uh, but yeah, little Yarra kind of that Yarra Junction way is where we're uh, planning to do something. No, so, I'm really yeah. going for a year. It's beautiful there, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, Diane. It's got to just, yes, that's it, Diane. Um, I'm part of the Newcastle group. That there's a few of us here, um, Paula and Ben and Jill, and maybe there's some others too. Um, we're looking at maybe something a bit more rural now, and I have been a part of um, the, I'm not sure if you're aware of NUCO in Newcastle, um, but it's more of an urban design, and I, I've been part of their grounding. They've got some land and hopefully going to be starting to build soon. Um, but I was just, you know, interested in the model that you used, I guess, to see what other people have done and how they've succeeded. Um, because I know it's a bit of a hard slog sometimes. So interested to hear what others have done and, and what you what advice you have for us, basically. Thank you. The new co is a, a co-housing development, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Jackie. Oh, hi guys. <clears throat> I'm from um, Hobart and I've just sold some land in Victoria and um, it's only a small block. I'm, I'm not loaded. Um, but I'm wondering where to go to sort of next and what to do. Um, I'm in Tasmania, um, but I'm looking at things in New South Wales, uh, some of the um, sort of co-housing rural type scenarios. Um, um, I've got pets, I've got a dog, and so probably not an eco village, although I love the idea. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I'm also trying to start up um, a housing not-for-profit for, -profit for um, older women's housing. Uh, so women over 50 doing um, compact house designs and um, uh, small um, infill housing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but this whole... Um, Sort of model that you've got is really interesting to me and maybe it can be applicable for what i want to do maybe it'll change shape all right thanks jackie um we've got iphone on the law on the line but i don't know anything else other than that um that person might be just wanting to listen in okay megan we might go to megan sorry i was just typing and now i'm, I'm a bit uh, hang on. Um, so so um, I'm new to this as well, but I have been researching it for a little while now. Um, I see Jason Hilders on there and I remember listening into one of his talks about this. So, um, yeah, still still researching. Um, I've seen a few different, like, housing arrangements around. I don't mind, especially... Like I don't feel like I need to be too too close to the coast, um, probably because I'm a bush kid. But yeah, I'm, I know Claire and, and Tori, and I know they're starting on their journey too. So you're just listening in tonight. That's about it. Thanks, right. thanks, Megan. And Sally is uh, salt. Sorry, salty soul wellness is that? 
Yeah, hi guys, I'm Belle. Belle, nice, nice to meet you. Andrew? That's right, yes. Okay, I met you at the Regen Festival in Malambimbi. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. So it's taken me this long to do anything. Um, and I've got land in the Clarence Valley, just near Yamba. And I've had that property for about three years. And yeah, I'm, I'm by myself. So I'm just exploring ideas of, you know, my intention when I bought the land was to create a community. We've been setting up permaculture and um, yoga retreats. But yeah, given everything that's going on and um, yeah, it's kind of fast tracked me a little bit more towards looking at setting up a community rather than a commercial venture. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm more, I've always been attracted to that. I might've got a little distracted and now I'm coming back to it. So I'm still at the very beginning of understanding how you could possibly do it in all the different ways. Um, I feel kind of lucky that I'm, that I am the sole custodian so I can sort of choose at this point how to do it so I want to be really um, educated on what what how to go about it so thank you great thank you Bill uh, Emma hello um I am living in Melbourne at the moment kind of suburban Melbourne um at the really early stages of planning a community it's very much a dream but that feels like it's growing and growing so it's really really exciting just to see everyone else's faces and to know that that's also, you know, growing with you all. Um, yeah, so really would be helpful to know more about the financial stuff, the structure. Um, we're particularly um, not quite sure how it would work with regarding getting a loan or like, how do you find the land if you haven't really got the money yet and sort of, I guess, those types of things. Um, there's about four of us, there's me and my partner who are very keen, two others who are growing keen um and so yeah also wondering like what's a good number kind of to start with and but yeah, yeah very early stages so yeah looking forward to hearing um, and learning tonight right thanks emma uh dom hi everyone i'm with jeff um who spoke early on i was a bit late um I've just put a couple of things there in the chat. We've been working solidly on our project nearly full time, the two of us. We've been working very hard. We're just about to submit our form to you guys. Um, we're up to page nine. Um, <laughs> so we're getting closer and we're getting consensus, which is very exciting. And we are absolutely looking at the region. So just so everyone knows, if anyone's interested in joining us, um, we're looking at the region just, so there's Armadale on the top of the Great Dividing Range. So we're looking just over the Great Dividing Range on the western side, up against the mountains, so it's close to the mountains. It's not in the far west or the central west. And it's part of the New England, but it's on the western side of the mountains with uh, near the Guaida River, which is completely clean that river and there is zero CSG I've just done the research just in case anyone knows because it's in the region like it's kind of near Narrabri but it's not Narrabri it's on the quite further east so it's it's there's no CSG and it's um part of the golden triangle of the food bowl of New South Wales so it's a great spot and beautiful beautiful community there so we're, we're really hoping to to go to that region. Okay, great. Thank you. And next on the list, where is Jason? Good evening, everybody. G'day, Andrew and Claire. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm currently living at Crystal Waters Eco Village, Permaculture Eco Village on the Sunshine Coast hinterland. Um, and I'm involved with the Global Eco Village Network and also Co-Housing Australia. And I've come tonight to support Andrew and Claire because I think it's great work that you two are doing. And um, just to, to hear how you go about how you go about what you do. And um, yeah, just to let you know that um, there's another, there's there's support there supporting you in the background in, in what ways that I can or we can with that organisation. And uh, keen to hear people's um questions and and how you two bring into the 
Thank you. Uh, you broke, just broke up there at the end, Jason, but thank you very much. Yes, we are part of the GEN, which is uh, GEN Global Eco Village Network, um, supports about 10,000 eco villages around the world. So it's it maps very, very, about, yeah, about 10,000. Yeah, yeah. So, Daniela. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny uh, from Sydney, an absolute beginner, and I'm here to listen and learn and, and grow through this experience. So, just want to absorb everything tonight and get to know as much um, info as I can. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Is Jemima on? Yes. Hi, everyone. Sorry. I'm trying to get this webinar up on my computer at the same time. Um, so I am part of a group in Brisbane, sunny Brisbane, uh, that are looking to set up a bit of a community. Um, we haven't got land. We're in the very early stages. We've got a big group of us who want to do it. And um, our plan is to look uh, in the vicinity of an hour and a half from Brisbane, uh, somewhere that's long term and we can we can grow um we can sort of grow our plans and and um live there together um i am representing my husband ben zamet tonight who i think has been in touch with you guys at eco villages and uh yeah just taking notes and here to learn we're really interested in i guess the uh infrastructure of how you've set it up so the legals, the financials, um, the I guess the general operations of how you make this, how you turn this into a reality. But thanks so much for putting it on. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Zeke. I think I'm busy too. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm listening in from Wellington, New Zealand. Um, I'm listening with Mel and Ben. Um, with my partner, Poppy. Um, we're, yeah, looking for just for more information on the whole uh, plan. And yeah, Thank that's you. about it. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Emily. Is Emily on? We might flick to Liam then. Hi. Um, so uh, I'm with a few of the other people that are, um, have already spoke. We're um, in Brisbane and we're still in quite preliminary phase of what we're doing. Um, so just looking for some more information about logistics and possible pathways. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Well done. Is it, did I get everybody? I think <coughs> anybody else? Okay, well, look, that um, there's a lot of people on, on board and it, it is exciting. We, we do feel like we're on sort of um, on, on trend with, <laughs> with what's happening. Um, it's been a dream of mine for over 10 years. Uh, essentially, we've come up with a, play, a, a model, like many people have said, that you can get into community right now. Um, it doesn't look like you tr you'd like what most people would be would have dreaming about, you know, most people dream about you know, 10 or whatever buildings and uh, 10 houses and everybody has their their own spaces, and that sort of stuff. But, um, but basically, we found that there's so much going against us, um, as far as council regulations and so forth. And also culturally, there's a lot of things going against us. So we had to find a way that actually worked, worked, worked for us and basically us acting as a large household um and not getting too big not getting too crazy like um, jason mentioned that he's at crystal waters that's only 20 minutes away it's the world's first permaculture village been going 35 years uh you the, you know you can't build one of those anymore if you if you tried to build something like that you would spend 10 out 10 years with the council um and you'd have to have probably you know two to ten million dollars in your pocket to be able to even get in, in there so that's so basically um the first step for you guys is to really go through the website there's the websites in four different areas there's our our vision and values which is what what it takes to be well, what you know it's basically our our uh, what it is to be an eco village australia village uh, and go through all of the the, the um legal and, and financial models and that sort of thing 
And then the starting your village, and that's the thing that I'm adding to as, as we go along. Uh, it's really important. Don't you don't do it on a, on a phone. Do it on a desktop. You can really, you know, you drink it in a lot better. Um, that's a step by step thing. Start here, go here, go here. So for those people who are on a on the on the start of the, the, the journey, definitely make sure you go there and have a have a real good look. The only thing I else want to, I wanted to say was um, was one more thing, and I can't remember that. But I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to Claire and she might be able to give us some clarity. Well, thanks everyone to join uh, for joining. It's very exciting. Um, yeah, look, you know, I, there's so much, there's so much that I could say and, you know, where do you start? But basically, I guess, you know, I've been on this journey with Andrew for about um, three years and we've been living here at the Millennia Eco Village for about two and a half. Um, I guess it must be three and a half because we looked for land for a year. Uh, anyway, it was absolutely a miracle that we found this and I feel so, so glad that we've gone on this journey and um, yeah, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, but you know, it certainly had its challenges and I, I, I feel really heartened to hear that lots of people are finding finding their people to join with because really, you know, without, without really getting on the very close same page with even just one other or two other or three other people, the whole thing's just a dream. So you know, that I, I think that's really just the first step is to find those people who are really in. And, you know, it means it means talking to a lot of people who are sort of maybe in um, and that's OK, too. You know, we met hundreds of people um, and lots of people were sort of interested and, and that's fine. And, you know, eventually we found people that that were really keen and, and you know, here we are. <laughs> um, so I think one of my pieces of advice would be don't be don't be afraid to be bold to kind of get started um, because if we waited for um, those people who were sort of on the fringe, kind of interested, you know, sitting a little bit back, but with one toe in the water, we just never would have done this. So I, I would say, don't be afraid to be bold just get in there and say, right, this is where it is. Take it or leave it. Because if you're trying to keep, you know, five or six families happy, you know, it's just, it's just really, really impossible because, um, you know, finding that that level of um, you might have people who are really keen, but then they go and buy a pr their own house because they can't wait. Um, and then you have someone, you know, in, in a year who might be keen, but they're not there yet because you don't even, you know, so actually being bold and jumping in can, um, I think, be a really good way to actually move the project from a dream to a reality. Also, I would say really early, make sure you know what your non-negotiables are. Um, and then and then everything else be very, very open to be honestly having that on the on the table for people to chat about. You know, for us here, one of our non-negotiables is we do not sell sections of the land or buildings to people. That's just not what we do. We all the land and all of the buildings are owned by the organization. Um, and, you know, personally, I feel really passionate about that because I hope that when when we're dead, there'll be still people here who can afford to live in Mullaney. Um, with these beautiful old growth trees with with possums and black tail, um, you know, yellow tail cockatoos that I saw this afternoon and a big, beautiful dam with fish. And so, that, you know, my dream is beyond just our lifetimes. And that's really important to me. Um, you know, if you're thinking about doing something really long term, thinking about that succession planning, how is that actually going to evolve? Um, for example, you know, obviously, um, if you've read the documents, you'll know that, you know, personally, our view is having um, sections that are sold to people, um, it does create issues moving forward because if it's on if it's on the freehold market, people can sell to anyone, they'll sell for the highest price, you know, which is obviously fine. That's a structural issue that we have in our society. And, you know, that's that is what it is. But, um, you know, we've decided to do we've decided to keep all of the land and all the buildings together under the one title. And I would strongly recommend doing that if you want to do something that has that has a legacy and also challenges um, some of these deeply ingrained injustices around around property ownership, which which does um, create lots and lots of issues for future generations. And you know, not to say that this is a perfect model. Of course, um, you know, I'd be the first to um, admit to some of its limitations. I think one of its limitations is many people, I would say, aren't ready to embrace um, the the stewardship model um, as much as the standard ownership or renting because that's you know we have ownership we have renting and this really is quite a radical departure from both of those where people who live here are renters and the landlord and they own the land they're, they're, they're responsible for the land and the place and the, and the things in the shed as much as anyone else and that 
And that really is quite challenging to people who want to take a back step on, resp on responsibility, you know, fair enough. And also challenging to people to really let go of that control and say, you know, this isn't the land that I own. We, we share this space together. So, yeah, I, I could go on and on. I, I'm very passionate about this issue, but I think we should move on to questions because that's what people really, you know, I, I did hear lots of people want to know about the, um, the structure. Um, so I will really briefly outline our structure and how we set it up. So, as I said, this is a non-profit organisation, Eco Villages Australia, owning all the land, which is three and a half acres, and all the buildings, um, which which are all buildings that have been here because this used to be an old dairy. So we've got about um, five buildings of varying sizes, um, and one of them was moved here. It's a tiny house cabin, um, and the rest were part of the old dairy infrastructure, um, and one's a cottage that we're sitting in now. So we've really used what we had to the most advantage that we can. And that's really helped us um, in the beginning. But basically, Andrew loaned um, 650,000, I loaned 170,000. And that was that was how we started, we loaned that money to the organisation, and the organisation purchased the land. So those loans are still um, made out to us, we signed a loan, agree loan agreement written up by a lawyer. Um, and eventually that money will come back to us. Now the way that the income is raised for those loans to be repaid over time, is through weekly contributions um, and we also pay so basically um, you know because we are very trans transparent with our finances um, we, we all pay about the same amount um, you know that's negotiated on a gift economy basis essentially what that means is we recognize um, that people start from different starting points people with bigger financial capacity have more financial capacity and people with less financial capacity can can um, have huge capacity in other ways and to actually have this sort of equality community and and an empowering um, uh, affordable housing project that um, is is viable and sustainable we do need people um, at, at all ends of that spectrum we, you know in many ways um, Andrew especially his financial capacity carries this community and we have to be honest about that because this community wouldn't be possible without Andrew um, you know me to a certain lesser extent and then many people who've lived here over over the last two and a half years um, have you know been minor players in that regard and have brought so much in other regards but regardless of the the loan amount that people pay um, to the organization to make it possible the the weekly contribution is negotiated with all people and everyone pays a weekly contribution to the organization and that money is spent on um, rates and water bill and um, upgrades and garden and you know there's no lack of things to spend the money on um, obviously as you would understand uh, and then some of that also goes to paying back the loans so in a nutshell that's it and happy to take questions so emma's um uh, Emma said, how, you, how much do you pay weekly? That in some ways it's irrelevant because in, in, in your community, it might be further west or something a lot cheaper. So it doesn't, you know, it's, it's up to each community to work out what, what it needs, what it needs and how, how it needs. Um, for us, it's um, the average, the average person in Maloney, you know, um, spends two, two fifty a week on a bedroom. We charge two, two fifty a week or not. We don't, we don't charge. Claire said it was a it's a gift economy, so the average person here pays 200 hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, that's including you know uh, utilities. But we've also got you know we got a, we we got we're a non profit, so we've got a, um, a grant for e bikes, and and that's that you know people who live here you know we um, Tammy and I just came back from a meeting in town on our e bike, so that we've got free public tra free free local transport here as well. You know this sort of thing, so. The sky's the limit with what what each community can decide, and that's why we've we've done those community agreements that you can start honing and working out. And, and many, like someone said, many of those things is you might tick the box. Happy for the community to decide. You know, like Claire said, no, get get saying. get the things that are non negotiable, but then go for the um, go for the things that yeah for the, that you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I was just going to say the the real question you need to <coughs> ask um, if you're interested in doing a similar capacity related model is what is sustainable for the community and what is sustainable for the individual and like andrew said there's no easy answer for that for some people you know maybe sustainable sustainable is paying a bit more and some people is paying a bit less but essentially if everyone can only spend ten dollars a week on the weekly contributions there's no community and that's just the reality of the world <laughs> so you know I, I like to think um that our, our model is based really on a very real 
um, rec recognition of capacity. Um, and when I say capacity, I mean, you know, financial, um, emotional, um, participatory capacity, uh, intellectual capacity. Like there's lots and lots of ways people can have capacity. And if you don't have the capacity, there's, there's no project, there's no eco village. So how do you find the capacity you need and be really open to the fact that that might not come from where you expected? That, that's what I would say, because, yeah, I think sometimes it's very easy to get fixated on, you know, like we almost bought the wrong place. <laughs> Thank goodness they didn't sell it to us. Um, but, you know, I actually say to Andrew, if we had more money, we, we would have bought the wrong place. And in some ways, um, yeah, just just recognising that, um, you know, if you just focused on the money, you might miss the gift of the land that someone says, oh, actually, I've got this great land, you know. So it's important to really just be very, very open to where those resources come from. And, yeah, recognise that that can come in many different ways. So some, there's another question about people working. Um, we've had people here that don't, don't work uh, outside the village. Um, we're all volunteers here, in fact. Um, some people have started, like Tammy started work here in Maloney. There's, there's plenty of work around. Um, there are people who work for full time. There's been people who work part time. So it's whatever you have, you know, whatever you've, it, you know, this is the great thing about our model. It does actually is able to, to, to take on uh, all, you know, all sorts of people because you know, if you do have an MO, you know, then you are expecting you people like, like a multiple occupancy. People are um, usually it's like everybody's throwing in two hundred and fifty thousand or one hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars or something like that, and, and there's all this. You know, you need to be equal. Um, then the, our model actually embraces those who had, don't have much, or they might have two thousand or twenty thousand or two hundred thousand or two million. You know, um, that it, yeah. you know, and other people would... can then come and live with us that don't have that financial capacity. Um, in fact, that's why one of the reasons I did it was I, I want to be able to give people the opportunity to be financially free, um, and and that you know that that would have never had a hope in hell being financially free. You know, like after we after we pay pay off this place, we could potentially then halve or slash our, our rent by ninety percent. Um, because, you know, but that's our that's our that's our decision. If you guys in the same way um, wanted to do the same thing and with the same model, that's that's up to, that's up to you. So, um, yeah, but, I would say you know personally from experience, any ways that you can make your model really empowering to people. Obviously, that's different um, for all different people because if you don't step into your power, then you know you're not going to take that opportunity. But yeah, finding ways to make it empowering is really important. Uh, you know. And, and I think if you're waiting for people to all pay the same amount and for it to all be fair, fair, then you might be waiting a very long time. And sometimes the people who have the financial capacity and are ready aren't necessarily those people that you really feel is a match. It, you know, it's like a relationship. It's got to be a match. So if, uh, for those who um, have, haven't got chat up, just have a look at the chat. That's where we're answering questions from now. Um, so the purchase price for Maloney, we, we got uh, this for $656,000. Uh, three and a half acres within five uh, seven minutes walk of, to town um big dam it's quite it was quite amazing really um and someone asked also said what was the what was the what made the alternative property a mistake probably because it would have been you know we were, would have been stuck out in the middle of nowhere needing vehicles to get well everywhere, we would have had a huge mortgage huge mortgage so i think one of the things that stood us in really good stead is that we don't have any bank mortgage you know obviously we have loans to pay back to andrew and i from the community over time um, but that's really really been a huge help to us and partly you know that's because we started from a really great starting point um we bought a property that was within our means and you know it's pretty rare it's, it's pretty rare these days to buy property without a mortgage but you know um without trying to be too um Prov provocative <laughs> I would say what is sustainability if not living within your means so you know while I recognize the reality of bank loans and I know that that's all across this country and lots and lots of people have them uh, my, my real question is how how can we separate from from that um, system where you know re in reality if we had bank loans it would cost us you know you all know because you're in touch with the real world it would cost us tens of thousands of dollars every year just to keep our, our head above water in interest alone. Um, and, and what we've done essentially is, is really lessen and lighten that load and the pressure of that by um, basically having zero interest. So the money that Andrew and I receive back is the same that we pay and we foregone interest. Um, partly that that is a philosophical choice because we passionately believe that when you um, 
create interest. Um, you know, we're, if we said, all right, we're going to loan this at three and a half percent, for example, then you're creating the need for growth. You're, you're making more money into the financial system, which is growing. The, and then the community of which we are a part has to get money from the financial system to give to us, which, you know, obviously for some people that might be a financial necessity. And I recognize that. But we had to really be honest about what it is that we need and what we need is this community to work. So we're not going to kick ourselves in our own shin. And this really gave our community the best chance to actually get started because, you know, realistically, we are all in a difficult financial context. Um, property is really, really expensive. And that's just the reality. That's it's not anyone's fault. It's but it is a systemic issue of, of property ownership and speculation, which everyone wants to sell their house for more than they bought it for. And that's that's what how systems work. So, um, you know, I don't want to get too preachy, but I personally feel very, very passionate about what we're doing because I think creating new, new spaces for the commons, while it's not exactly the commons, we're not doing a public park and we do have very strong boundaries about how people come to our community. Um, we, we are making a space that is, is, is more than any one person. Uh, and that hopefully, as I said, will will be held in perpetuity. So there's another question. Um, how do we get around council? Uh, and Ben, thank you. Ben and Mel put up um, one of our, uh, my last um, link that I sent out this. So if you haven't actually joined up to our web, our mailing list, make sure you do on ecovillages.com.au because that's that we only send out once a month. Um, but I'm continuing, especially I'm, I'm really focusing on this part, getting people, because look at look how many people are, are, are here, I'm here, really interested in this. COVID and, and lockdowns have made this really, really potent. And um, um, we say, so I'm trying, trying to help as much as, pe much as possible. So that's, that's where we, yeah, that's where I send out an email once a month. Uh, have a look at that. Um, we, there's no real getting around councils. I mean, you know, we, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got great neighbours, then go for it, do what you want. But councils will, um, they do have drones, they do have, you know, they do access um, sky, um, you know, what, what do you call it, satellites and so forth. So um, there's the, the, the chances of someone dobbing you in is, is strong. That's the way that councils definitely generally deal with things. They wait for someone to, to complain. The chances are really, really strong. Um, so there's no real getting around. That's why when we looked into this, this idea, my original seeding document, the original document that I that I wrote, um, yeah, was much more of a typical eco village. You know, you have 150 people and and you know 10 or 50 houses or whatever, and um, and it, and it's just not going to happen if you don't have 10 years of your life or or or, or 10 million dollars in your pocket. I just I wanted to get in the community now, and 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 so yeah, someone did ask, uh, is this um, uh, is the model, you can, is, uh, you know, under our model, you have one dwelling. Uh, essentially, yes. Um, it suited us because we, we wanted to eat together. We only have one kitchen. Um, and, and it might be a little bit of a mind flip for you guys to get, some of you guys to get around this, but it makes it possible to get in community now. Like we cook for each other. Um, in fact, today, because we we're so busy, Tammy you know, prepared it and then Claire just heated it up when we came back home. So, you know, we've, you know, when we're fully stocked here with adults, we've, we, we only cook once a month, uh, once a week. Um, and the rest of the time we sat down and, and we eat like kings, you know. So, so that never gets old. That's a really beautiful thing. And, you know, one of the things uh, when you think about community, what you want, you want support. There are a lot of communities and, and eco villages and out there that, that, that aren't, you know, you've got your own little space and pretty much that's it. You don't really, it's just the same as a street. You know, it's, mm. there's, as, there's as much engagement as a street. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to put all my effort, this effort into it. And all we do is share a lawnmower. That's not what I wanted. That was, that was not what I was, what I was in the business of. We, we, you know, if you look at, go to the front page of our website, you'll see the little video there and Claire talks about the support and so forth. And that's, it's a really beautiful thing. You know, one of my friends came and stayed with us and, and um, for three nights and he just said look everybody here's got time to talk you know like who, who when was the last time you heard that <laughs> you know it's it's support that's really what we want we want we want con connection for me the whole project's about connection to self connection to others connection to to um to to the planet uh, to earth and connection to the divine if that's your thing you know so that's um that's in saying that though you you could have a secondary dwelling um you could subdivide put a second house on there because because there's lots of things going against us like i said but there's there's a couple of things going for us and that is that one house doesn't have to be under one roof 
So, um, you know, we they, they call it a, the councils tend to call it a pavilion style house. And that's what we've sort of got here. We've got the bedrooms, we've got the community rooms, we've got the, we've got the bathrooms, we've got the kitchen, all in different buildings. Um, and that works really well. And that, and that, I love it actually. And, and our little bedrooms are really small and that sort of draws us out into community. It draws us out into nature, exactly the things we want to do. Um, and we don't need these massive houses. Australia had the, the biggest housing in the world. We got a, a, an average of 246 square meters um, housing, which is insane. Um, next biggest housing, um, next biggest sort of country that has housing is, is obviously America. Um, but what's quite surprising, they're quite a lot smaller. They're 214 square meters. Um, you know, we've got these huge, huge houses in Australia and we don't need it. In many ways, we actually don't even need, we, had, we don't even have a housing problem. We've got somewhere between eight and 14 million spare bedrooms in any given night in Australia. Like that's, that's, that's our reality. What we do have, obviously, we, we have a um, um, resource allocation problem. I'd be happy to answer that next yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, go. Yes, yeah, so there's a question about um, how we manage the process selecting people. Um, and I would say that we've gone, started off with something quite formal and basically over time made that um, more and more informal. Uh, basically, the way that we um, decide who comes here is by consensus. So everyone who lives here has to say yes for the people. Yeah. And that person obviously has to say yes, too. So it's it's a two way street. It's not it's not we will let you know if we're going to let you live in our our eco village. It's, it's not like that. Uh, it's got to be a match. So, you know, obviously we're positive. We try to be really welcoming. Um, and, and the great one of the great things is that because we have a physical space and people can see for their own, uh, you know, with their own eyes what it is that they would come to, it's much easier for people to self-select out than with a concept. When we started, we had a concept in their minds. People thought, oh, Eco Village, it's my dream. In reality, it's, you know, working <laughs> with your hands, figuring out your conflicts. Like it, it's not for everyone. You need, and you know, you need to have a very good base of communication skills to even get past the first few meetings. But yeah, I, you know, I would just say it's definitely, definitely worth it. <laughs> and, and because we say it's, it's relational, you know, it's, it's amazing because we're trying to um, take away the power of money in many ways. Um, it's amazing how people come to us and lead with the money. I've got two hundred thousand dollars. Where can I join up? You know, and it's like, well, well, we don't want your money. You know, I mean, even you know, even when Tammy came, she goes, well, you know, do you want a loan? Oh no, no, we don't want your money. You know, wait, let's wait for eighteen months and see see if you like it. You know, see if you like it, not, you know, see, see if it works. You know, we, we, you don't go in your, in your first Tinder date and say, I've got $200,000, where do I sign? You know, you just don't do that. It's, you know, this is, this is a relationship. Yeah. And also, I think one thing that I've struggled with is um, being happy to come to a decision that's not a decision, to decide that we're not going to have a decision. Like recently, we discussed um, a person coming here and, you know, it was sort of not really yes. Some people thought yes, some people thought no. And we just said, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. Um, and, you know, actually not coming to a decision can sometimes feel like a failure, but actually if, if we can just let things be what they are and not try and force outcomes at meetings, sometimes things evolve how they evolve and there's not always an answer to be, to be found. Um, and that, and you know, that's something that I've really learnt here is just to be comfortable with the consensus process that it does take a long time, but it does actually in the end bring bring people along for the longer journey. And, and you know, I, personally, if you're talking about governance structures, I, I totally recommend consensus. We've used it here, um, you know, it takes a bit of practice, but actually really um, coming, coming to a point where people say, okay, I can live with that. Maybe it's not their first choice, but everybody says we can live with this um about a decision it, it's very very empowering and yeah i totally recommend that as a governance model as a decision making model so emma asked about how many people we can have i mean our we are a large household like, like you, we can't have 50 people on one in one house um we'll only ever have you know eight ten people in this place you know and then when we when we uh, have a stable a stable sort of population we might go okay do we do we subdivide do we buy next door whatever like there's there's and those yeah. sort of decisions you know i would i would really really strongly urge everyone to understand that it doesn't have to be big to be good you know while while i think crystal waters is totally amazing and there's 
Mora Mora and there's Narara Eco Village and, and these, you know, these projects have really amazing capacity um, to bring lots and lots of people in in different ways. You know, here I've I've found personally, and I, you know, I can just speak for myself, lots and lots of my needs are met. All my needs have been met at different times for belonging, connection, for being heard and seen and understood and, and for support and love and um, mutuality and teamwork and trust and to you know actually you don't need your needs met with with you know 40 or um, 150 like it, or two it, it can be quite small and it can still be really good you know and sometimes the solidarity of people who really have a strong shared vision while they may be fewer numbers can be very powerful and, and very affirming so you know we don't have a lot of people here at all but we but there is definitely a sense of being on that shared vision and I think sometimes having a smaller group who are more aligned rather than trying to, you know, be everything to everyone and bring those people in who are sort of on the edge. That's that's the reality of working with a bigger group. If you have five families, 10 families, you know, there is going to be a lot of compromise. And in some ways, your vision, you have to be prepared to let that be watered down a bit because that's the reality of, of, of really being... Um, what it is that lots and lots of people would say yes to and that and that's you know that's fine that's that is what it is but yeah i can only speak for myself when i say it does not have to be big to be good and for your needs you know your needs to be met together is really just about connecting around shared vision and and, and purpose so megan has asked um said if if we're open to having people come up yes we do we open up our village every month um, so again, get, jump on our, on the mailing list, and and we send out once a month saying yes. This this weekend we are we are doing this what we call a work party usually tour and that sort of thing. So for those in Brisbane, for those in South East Queensland, come up and 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 hang out. Like that's that is the best way. You know you, you know that is definitely the best way. And and we also host people through the Workaway website and people who get in touch for um, anywhere between one and three weeks. And we cap it at three weeks because we do have an opportunity for people to become long term members here as residents and really three weeks is enough to try it out. So basically the way we do that is is we try it out for a week if they want to stay and we want them to stay. We, you know, think about extending it to two and then we think about extending it to three. And that's just just an ongoing conversation, which which can be um, sometimes awkward and difficult. But yeah, personally, I found honesty um, and transparency is is something that we that we can really learn from being in community and it's actually breath of fresh air sometimes when people are really honest about their feelings and needs and if you don't know about nonviolent communication please please find out and learn about nonviolent communication nvc developed by marshall rosenberg we use it here all the time it's just a, a fantastic personal growth tool if nothing else and an excellent shared language around needs to help yeah. Yeah, Ooh, 20 seconds back. <laughs> ten minutes yeah. in, ten minutes in. We, we've, we've, had, we've taught it to all the people, you know, not just me, but people who've come here have learnt it and everyone has felt at different times that it's been of great value to have that shared understanding of, of needs. Anybody can build anything. You know, like it's, you can build, anybody can build a, a village. You know, it's, it's the, it, we actually, this is what we're about. We're actually about human interaction. You know, we've, we've got, as a species, we have to learn how to work together. And then otherwise we may not last one or 200 years, you know, like this is, this is our role right now, how to work together. And, and this is the movement to do it. So I'm really pleased that you guys are with us, but that, that is actually, that's the thing. Um, Fiona's actually, well, Fiona's actually um, asked this twice, I think. So I might go to that one. Okay. So she's asked if there's an exit strategy, someone wanted to loan money, wants to leave. Now this is really, really cool. Like all, the eco, all the sort of the, the successful eco villages around the world have this sort of one membership model, and that is, it's hard to get in, easy to leave. Now the language may not be great, but but it's you know it's not it's not that easy. To like you know it's not easy to get in, but once you're there, it's got to be easy to leave. This is where an MO can be murderously difficult to get out of. You've got someone, you've got everybody paying to a quarter of a million dollars. Um, and say I'm included and, and I end up being, being a total tool and you guys just cannot live with me. And you, you know, over time you then say, well, you've just got to go, Andrew, you know, and I go, well, after I tell you to F off and stuff, um, then, then I then I say, well, I need my money back. And you guys, it, it's not, it's here, it's in the land. We can't give it to you. And someone has to buy you out. Um, and I said, well, I know someone, you know, Joe over here, he's good. You know, you're not going to take my my word for it. You, you, get, you know, you can see the problem. Like we've, Surprisingly, we found it you know, difficult. People aren't lining lining up at the door, even though that you know we're not asking for a quarter of a million dollars. We we just we just ask a rent, which is the same roughly roughly the same as what you'd pay in town. You know, so even 
finding that person um, to, that's got a quarter of a million dollars, who's wanting to live in your area, you know, who, who, who has got good communication skills, all that sort of stuff, really difficult. So I could be living with you and your MO for five years to making your life total hell. It's got to be, this is one thing we learned, we've got, you've got to set, whatever you set up, it's got to be easy to leave. And that's why we chose our model, essentially, because it's, yeah. it's easy to leave. So basically, the loan agreements that we've signed are for 10 years. Um, and if other people wanted to sign them for three or 15 or, you know, that is to be negotiated with people based on their capacity. Um, but basically, if Andrew wanted to leave, if he got sick of it all, then, um, then he would have to wait for 10 years. That's that's the commitment, and the organisation is not um, legally um, required to give him his money back any sooner than the loan agreement. So essentially, if you make a loan, um, you need to be willing to loan it for the entire amount. So that's true. At the end yeah. of, I will. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I speak on, on this topic when you're when you're finished your piece? Yeah, I might answer your question. I was just saying. So in the case that we don't um, have the money in ten years. Um, what there's a few options you know one is that we could find other people to make loans and then to pay andrew back for example um, another one is we could go to the bank um, and the company could um, get a loan and then pay andrew back uh, and then another option is we sell and you know that's that's possible if if he needs his money back he needs his money back so you know obviously when the money is paid back to andrew and to me then there is no um there there is no possibility that anyone can force the sale um, to get the because there are no loans that they're paid back so there is there is a small amount of risk to be honest in the early years that somebody will you know you get to the end of 10 years and they're not willing to loan it anymore and that's their prerogative but basically if you try it out for 10 years and you have a 10-year experiment and you really can't make that work financially then you have to be honest about the fact that that's not financially viable but hopefully and you know as as the years go by we'll have other people who want to make loans you know we have other options you know the property is realistically going to probably triple in in 10 years it's probably almost doubled and that's not you know that's just a speculative market like we i hope never to sell because we um, as i said are, are hoping that this help this place will be held in perpetuity but the reality is that those loan agreements um need to be paid back and and that's a reality for all of the community members you know obviously we made those loans but we invite people when they come to be a part of the community to hold this space as a community member and to think about the fact that that's that is the groundwork under the organization you know we own the choices that we made but that is the context of this community that it is basically being carried by by the early um support of of andrew mostly and me to a lesser extent and that's and that's how we were able to make it possible and you know it's not a perfect world like maybe in a perfect world we'd have 10 people they'd all have the exact same amount to loan and you know it would all be perfectly lined up but in in reality that's just that's just not how how it works and and maybe you, you will get that beautiful dream scenario where everyone has the same amount because they all happen to sell their houses around the same time and they've got the cash and they all want to live in the same place but it, just in my experience um th that's pretty rare that's pretty rare and, and you know i'm not to say I'm, I'm certainly not saying it's not possible but yeah it, it you have to i think as a founder you need to be sort of willing to carry people and not be angry about it because it, it's your dream and it's your capacity um, and people will come on, come along on, on varying levels. And some people will be, you know, very emotionally involved, very physically involved, um, very mentally involved, you know, pour their heart and soul in. But, it, you know, if you're the founder, you might have to kind of bump it up with a bit of, with a bit of uh, initial cash because it's just, that's just, that's just the reality of the world. In, in saying all that, though, if someone does want to leave and they, you know, like I said, legally have to be, you know, five years, ten years, whatever it is, um, if we if we do have the money, and as money is getting loaned back, or paid back to us, someone who has loaned money before, or someone new coming in, we might be able to supplement and say, look, you know, we don't want to hold hold that person's fifty grand. There's bad energy around that, or, or potentially, or whatever. Um, we would do the best we could to actually pay that out, pay that person out. Like that's, you know, while legally we wouldn't need to, um, I think that's probably the, the most likely scenario that, that in fact we do try to pay that person out, you know, because there's no, no point holding onto that, onto that money. But, um, but yeah, really what we're offering is we're offering people to live in a beautiful, beautiful paradise 
and you know that we could, to actually get financially free you know when we, we're saying you know like someone asked how long who knows might be 10 might be for 15 years depends on how many people come here that sort of stuff um you can you know we've done forecasts and that sort of stuff but forecasts are forecasts you know but we you know 15 seems to be a reasonable amount that might happen um you know as our, it as just our... depends though like in the development phase there's going to be a lot of costs mm. we you know we did twenty five thousand dollars worth of earthworks we we renovated this house that cost nearly forty thousand dollars we renovated the tiny house cabin well that was nearly seven thousand including buying it like there's just costs it's just expensive so if if you want to invest in the infrastructure then you're going to have to delay the loan repayments unless everyone's willing to pay above market you know weekly contribution rent for lack of a better term and what we've found here is um it is quite difficult to get people to really understand that when they pay the money they're paying themselves like we are the community and we give the money to ourselves that that's you know it, it's really a, such a big thing to get your mind around because people are so used to paying money to a landlord or to a bank that we pay we pay ourselves we put the money in and then we decide how we're going to repay those loans and, and make all of the beautiful things we want possible um, but yeah I just want to stress you know it's a real world like it's you know, we all have to live with the financial realities of the real world. So Fiona's asked a very important question here, I think. And um, um, this, we, we, capital speculation on property has caused the problem. We don't want to get into that problem, into that whole area. Like, I, you know, that's why I've loaned the money for 0% interest. Um, we talk about the eight forms of capital. We, we're really good at a society to talk about the, the financial capital and the and the and the uh, material capital, but we, but we swap we swap financial capital for experiential capital every day of the week. That's what our world holidays are about, and that sort of stuff, you know. Um, so we we are this our model is out there. It's not accessible to like people. It takes a bit of a mind flip to actually get there because because we don't want to. We, you know, this is our this is our home. We don't want this to be. A wealth creation exercise. There are there are literally millions of ways to make money out there. This is not one of them. Mm -hmm. This is custodianship. This is this is um, stewardship. You know, this is this is like well, I I really love that this 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 model really meshes with First Nations principles. It's not capitalistic principles. Um, if if you want to make money out of land, then plenty uh, ways, then to, plenty do ways to do it. Not not this way. You know. Yeah. I I feel very like it really meets a big need for me to integrate my the way that I want the world to be and the way that we can make this space to actually stand on a very strong philosophical ground. And while that may not be everyone's desire, maybe you just want to live in a cool place with cool people, as Andrew says, you know, actually, I think asking yourself why is really important. You know, as someone who's been an activist, who's passionate about social change and is looking into the, you know, the barrel of climate change and, you know, it's really scary think, well, if not now, when, like, how are we actually going to challenge the status quo of our societal um, inequality? And we, we actually, as people of privilege, we can, we can do that in some ways. You know, yeah, we can't change the entire world. We can't change the banking system. We can't change the fact that, you know, it costs a million bucks to buy an apartment, you know, in the inner city. But we, but we can actually say, well, what are we going to stand for? And, and how are we making the new world one hectare, one, you know, one eco village at a time? And, you know, personally, I would urge everyone to consider collective ownership and to really hold that space for, for you know, young people, old people, people over 50 who are living in their cars. You know, some people have talked about that, you know, housing affordability and justice is such an important issue in our time. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself, is that, is that an important issue to you? And how, and how do you structure your project to actually address the inequalities of our society? So, if you're interested in doing that. So, yeah, that's right. So we didn't... No judgment. <laughs> We, we didn't want this conversation. We didn't want the conversation in 10 years time when someone comes and says, I'll offer, 10, I'll offer you $10 million for your property. Um, so there, someone asked about, um, one of the questions was about shareholders. We don't have any shareholders. When the property sell, if the, pro if the property ever sold, we've actually created this whole thing so that the property won't sell. We've taken this land off the speculative market forever in perpetuity. Um, but if someone does come and says, you know, say, I'll give you $10 million, we did not want the conversation. Well, there's 10 of us here, there's a million dollars each, let's do it. You know, so we, we thought, how do we do this? How, we look, at, look at the legal model and we locked it away. If, if we, do, if we did, were, were to sell for $10 million, no members, no shareholders, no directors, no, nobody can access that money. 
Um, because and so what happens is that that money would have to, we'd have to, we'd have to be going and we'd have to buy a new property, and that means we'd have to buy a new property 10, 10 k's out of town. Why would we do that? You know, we've taken the, the 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 little carrot that says let's sell it away, and this place will always be here. And, and we've got someone, one of our friends here in Maloney, had this beautiful property, probably nicer than ours, or it was more developed than ours. And um, she was doing community stuff there, and I was starting to think maybe we should do a little sister community sort of thing with her. She sold, bang, gone. It's off the spec, you know, it's back on the speculative market. It's back in, you know, back in the whole system. Um, it just showed me that actually what we're doing by locking this away, um, you know, like I said, it's, it potentially can be sold, but practically it won't be. Um, that we, that we, what what we've done here is something really really special. Imagine if half of Maloney did this. Um, in the half of the street, main street did this 10 to 40 years ago. You know, our co-ops wouldn't have to be still paying rent. You know, this this cooperative nature, I think, is the future. The you know, working together. Um, Bring back the commons. Bring back the commons. Yeah. Now look, it's it's seven it's seven past eight. I'm happy to go longer. I'm not sure if. I think like, we should wrap up at exactly at 8.30. 8.30. So if if people are, have the patience to stay till 8.30, we can continue answering questions. And then I think we should finish so we yeah, don't yeah, I think that's lose a, people randomly. Is, it, is everybody happy with that? Do we want to keep going? Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. You can always come back. We do this, we'll do this again because yes. it, it's obviously a good need and, and it's so much solidarity for you all, with your projects. Yes. So what, <laughs> what we um, we came up with an idea this morning, actually, we didn't do it today because that would spring it, bring it on you, but we really want this to be a relationship. So um, the people that were, were there last time, um, you know, if, if we are going to, to, if you guys are going to put to buy land and um, especially under our model, like, like, and that's, that's what's possible. You could actually buy the land under Eco Villages Australia. You know, we would help you start your own company and start your own nonprofit and everything if you want. We've got great lawyers and that sort of stuff. But from my perspective, I would rather have one nonprofit looking after or supporting a um, hundred uh, eco villages rather than a hundred nonprofits because running a nonprofit sucks, and I'd rather have help, and I'd rather you guys help me. So, if that's going to happen, then we need to know each other. We need to trust each other. So, this these monthly things I think are going to be really important for for those for that ongoing relationship. Like we said before, it's all about relationship. What we might do though at the start, if anybody's new, we might do a half an hour. This is we're talking next time, but half an hour. Let's just get everybody up to speed, and then get back into the relationship start stuff and and getting to know each other and that sort of thing, and these more more in depth conversations after that. So just keep an eye on that on, on our on our um, email communication about that. But okay, so Paul and Ben's off. Great, thank you. Um, what um, Emma says, how, what is how does it work to be part of Eva? Do we join? Yeah, um, so yeah, that's basically. I, I can take that yeah, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, so basically, if you were interested in buying a property under the, the banner of Eco Villages Australia, then the organisation would own this one and that one. Um, and so, what that would look like is is the people who um, raise is, would loan the money to Eco Villages Australia, and loan agreements would be made out to all of those people. Um, now, you know, it's possible we could negotiate. Um, a certain interest rate if that's what people needed um, but as I said um, that it does put the project at risk it does um, create uh, more funds that need to be found um, and it puts a bit more pressure on the project so basically all of those things would have to be um, discussed at great detail it you know it's not going to happen overnight um, but yeah we we set up our organization with um, a lawyer called David Chung he was very decent you know, he's not a not he's not an intentional communities person but he was a decent straight up and down lawyer and he gave us great advice. So, you know, we, you can talk to him um, if you're interested. You know, he's a lawyer. He will charge you. But we found him to be actually um, very decent, very decent and very, um, you know, very gener generous for a lawyer, I found. <laughs> so if you if you do want to do that, if you're in Australia, obviously it's specific to the law of Australia. But, um, you know, we, we have a company. Um, rather than other forms of um, ownership structure, we, we're not a cooperative. We're not um, a, um, in what's it, what's the one? Incorporated association. We're not an incorporated association. We are a company limited by guarantee, and that was our advice. Um, you know, for a number of reasons, it was sort of quicker and easier to set up, um, and we only need a minimum of three board board directors. So essentially, if you were going to buy Eco Villages Australia land um, with you know with under the banner of the organisation. Um, then it would be appropriate for, you know, some or all or 
of your members to be on the board. So we would discuss how that would work and then we would be together making decisions about the organization. But, you know, certainly Andrew and I are not going to tell you what you need to do at your eco village. Um, the, you know, the organization would be handling legal issues um, and, and, you know, financial issues because we would be in the same company. Um, but you, you know, your organization would be totally autonomous and essentially you know andrew and i are on the board along with our friend joan mcvilly you know that's not a secret it's public information but the board is is largely a box ticking exercise because we our main concern here is is figuring out how to live day to day and make our beautiful eco village of our dreams so that the board is is not certainly not um telling people how to live or you know uh, being the hierarchical dictators it, it's it's a structure that exists in our society and you know we still have one foot in the world that is and one foot in the world as we want it to be with no board boards and you know so that's that's essentially a bit of a rundown of how that might progress if you wanted to buy land with with the eco villages australia banner because people people often say like um yeah but it's, it's your company um you know anyway so but it's not like it's like it's if you were on the board it would be as much your company yeah yeah it's like it's like this the the, the head of um lions australia does you know doesn't own the the, the, the properties of of that, that the lions own this sort of stuff that's how that's the relationship it's like it's a non-profit it'll it'll go along um be, you know beyond our time um so jill did ask about um, more about not being under one roof well some people call it an exploded house. Some people call it a, um, a pavilion style house. Some councils will make you do um, walkways between the buildings and this sort of stuff. So it can't be too far away and this sort of, this sort of thing. But each, each, each uh, council will have a different rule there. Um, I do have that blog on the starting a village section there that does talk more about that to give you a bit more, a um, bit more of a clue about what to look for. Um, to get to know what, you know, what your sites are, what, what your council is and that sort of thing. So you, it's really important to get and, and have a look at that sort of stuff and, um, and, and understand the law a bit. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. so yeah, basically, you know, there's another, I think I said before that there's, um, we don't have to go under one roof. There's also, we, we, there's other thing working toward for us is that, that there's no limit to the size of your house. I mean, crazily, this, this block, three and a half acres, we could actually have a 1.75 acre house on this block. Um, you know, it's insane. In 11 different buildings. <laughs> you know, um, so- One really great kitchen. Yeah, but you put but you put three tiny houses and council lose their shit, you know. So it's, it, you know, councils are made by laws, by rich people who, you know, it, the whole system is moving toward, has moved towards, you know, these massive houses on little blocks. That's what, that's what the system's done. Uh, and we want to do something different, you know, so. Yeah, so, but you, you know, you can be creative within the law. You can have a, a kitchen and then you can also have an um, outdoor barbecue area and then you can also have a wet bar and then you might have, you know, a room with a sink in it. Uh, you know, it, it's still one house. Yeah, but generally the councils are interested in how many kitchens you have. That, that generally is what they want. They want. They don't want you to have 15 kitchens in, in, in your, because they'll, they'll shut you down basically. Um, so Fiona's saying a massive share house, sort of. You know, we, to, we that's why we use the word co-housing because co-housing has the best of both worlds. You've actually- It's more like co-living. It's co-living. It's got, it's got this, you've got your, you've got your space. Um, you've got your private space, you know, there that, that you can retreat to. One of my favorite sayings is that it's easier to find solitude in community than community in solitude we've woken up you know five, for 50 years later and we've gone shit why why does why why do my why do i feel like shit because we've designed it that way we've designed for isolation we've designed for solitude you know and what we're doing is designing for interaction um so we've got these yeah we've got our own spaces but we've got our big areas we've got our big you know shared areas that sort of thing so and that can be one house um because pat rafter's house is two thousand square meters you know, so so it's sort of like a share house, but yeah. share houses don't really share, share houses don't really um, work that well. People yeah. don't live in that long because because they're not designed to to, to houses are designed for mum, dad, two kids, and a dog. You know, so so this is this is this is the um, this is the difference between you know if you if you design a, a good co housing co living share house. Then people will stay because it's because mm. it's got they've got maybe we could just briefly briefly talk about what we have here mm. so we've got this ch very charming cottage it's about 67 square meters with three bedrooms in this quite large living room and um, then we've also got a tiny house cabin um 
that's not not that far away um, with nicely landscaped areas uh, and then we also have an outdoor um, outdoor built like a little outhouse building there which is the laundry and the toilet and that's quite close to the house but it's sort of it's a bit larger than an, you know an outhouse because um, it's got the washing machine composting as well um, it's a composting toilet composting toilet and we've got an outdoor shower um, so at the moment that's you know it's hot water but it, it is outside um, and then we have a caravan as well um, and then we and we have an outdoor kitchen which is quite large but is basically two walls completely open and we can do that because we live in Queensland um, but yeah we, we essentially have this number of buildings that you walk between um, so if you want to go for example from your bedroom or from the from the tiny house cabin or from the caravan to the kitchen you walk across and they're sort of in the middle so it, it's kind of like this really um, lovely little um, uh, sort of spread out exploded house that you know that you walk around you spend a lot of time outside going you know to the washing line and veggie yeah gardens are all veggie there gardens throughout it, it, it's great I, you know I totally recommend it as a way of living it's a beautiful lifestyle but you know not for everyone <laughs> sometimes it rains <laughs> um, I might answer the question briefly that someone had about contribution because yeah. I think it's such an interesting issue and the cause of quite a lot of disagreements in communities. Basically, I would say, um, you know, as much as possible, if if people can, try not to make your community transactional because it puts people straight into a capitalist transaction mind frame. Oh, you know, so I pay this and I get that. Oh, that's not worth it. If I, you know, I shouldn't be paying as much to get, you know, it's the same with work hours. If you say everyone has to do the same amount of work, 10 hours a week, whatever it is, it's never going to be enough. I'll tell you now, because there's just there's just so much to do. If you're setting up a community, there is so much to do. So basically, I think the answer is and, and what we found works really well is creating a culture of volunteerism and a culture of contributionism and really recognizing the efforts that people put in. Um, and, and recognizing your own efforts. Every week we have a meeting, um, we start with a check-in, We and then the second item is acknowledgements. And we spend a decent, you know, anywhere between five and 25 minutes acknowledging the things that people have done. And it's just lovely. You know, you say, oh, I noticed someone picked that thing up and I meant to pick it up, but no, I didn't. And, and someone says, oh yeah, that was me. And you say, oh, thanks for doing that. It's just lovely. It's lovely. And, it's, and it actually helps that 20 minutes a week helps a lot with our sustainability. So then we're not counting hours or you, you know, you only did eight last week and I did 10 or whatever, it, you know, it, it's just not realistic because life happens. People have different circumstances. Some people have children. You know, what we basically say is, is give what you can and be happy about it and don't feel bitter and, and step back if you need to. And I'll ask for what you need. If you need a support, you put it out there. I need more support. I'm feeling really alone here, whatever it is. So it's much more a relational model and it's much more based on the reality of, of people's capacity. And we've had people here who, you know, really eating three healthy meals a day and changing a few nappies is the maximum capacity. They, they can't get out there and build a stone house. Like it's just not gonna happen. And that's not, you know, judgmental. That's just, it's just the reality of their capacity. They just can't, they just can't also do more than they're doing. And, and then we've had other people like Andrew who can just do, you know, 10 hours of work every single day. And, you know, I guess we sort of set a fairly high bar because we're very enthusiastic. And, and I think in some ways we've had the opposite problem of what people imagine. We don't have people who are sort of sponging we mostly have people who feel guilty that they're not doing enough and so i think that's also a danger um you know is burnout and people feeling constantly like everyone's doing more work and i need to look busy you know so it's really just about recognizing the efforts of everyone and, and moving as much as possible towards a relational culture of, of volunteerism and every single person in our organization is a volunteer and i think that really helps a lot so I would definitely recommend as much as possible, really keeping all care work and maintenance in house, you know, not not outsourcing that because you start to start to get to the point where people become more and more disconnected. That's just my advice around that. Can I make a point on the uh, financing? Uh, we're looking at doing pretty much the same as you, you know, put it in interest free. But we thought on in terms of rebalancing as quickly as possible, we thought that the rental system would be used to pay off the highest lender first down to the second highest lender and then pay them to off down to the height of so you so you rebalance the burden of financing as early as possible and then on top of that if you do have an exit a person exiting the community you can put the, you can put their full payment precedent to everyone else's payments so you can accelerate that and if you get a new member coming in of course who's got money to bring in as well well that 
pretty much will clean them off the slate straight away. That's how we thought of getting around that issue. Great idea. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Mm. I mean, what, what we see almost as a rolling loan as well is that if someone comes in with $200,000, then if we don't need it as a, as, an, as, a, as a group, then we probably would pay the top person, person, that paid per, pay the person that's paid the most, um, that money. Um, and therefore, you can see it or this automatic balancing. Yeah, and that's exactly as what a, you were as saying. Going around, yeah. so so it is a good idea because you don't you don't want someone you know, earning, you know owing a lot, and you want yeah. people to, to take the burden as it and goes we, on. You know, we do have the risk that Andrew dies, and we're in a difficult position of paying his kids back um, because that's that money is their money if he writes the will to them. So you know, obviously, spreading that um, risk it's just risk management across a number of holders is a good way to go uh, instead of putting all our eggs financially in one basket so Fiona's a really interesting question here about um people not so much but talk about investment properties but by, by being locked out of the housing market uh, if they can no longer afford to buy a house um i was i was one of my jobs um i did for 10 years i got a house in i got a house as far as that and, and all my colleagues got a house and um as part of the package and some people left those jobs after 40 years and had no money. And some people left the job after 40 years and had money for a house. So, so it wasn't the system's problem, it was the people's problem in many ways, you know, that, that actually, you know, if, if it's, it only, I mean, it only cost me $10,000 to live here the first year. So that's not a lot to learn. earn. I could go out to the market. I could, you know, if I wanted to, get a job and you know get me 70 grand and 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 save pay, you know save the money you know yeah. like like you know this is this is still available to you i mean that's that's that um it's just that, yeah. that just that your primary house i think philosophically should not be uh you know should not be something that we you know it, it's just the way that our whole society works but it creates inequality you know there's no question about it like the people that were lucky enough to um, and some of them were, some of blind luck, some of it was hard work, whatever, um, systemic issues. We've, we had a big, massive talk about this last night. Um, that's the one great thing about being here is you just have these wonderful conversations mm. almost, almost nightly, so you know? So, um, and I would also say, you know, we're just two people who wanted to do a collaborative housing project. We can't solve every issue of the whole systemic situation. Like, yes, property value is probably going to go up if, if, you know, the last hundred years is, is anything to go by, but. It doesn't mean that what we're doing is um, is wrong just because the system, yeah, like, yes, you know, if you want to buy a house in, and in the future it's worth more, then that's, you know, your choice. And, and basically we know that and people who come and live here, hopefully they've figured that out too. It's really just about making a choice and owning that and, and being comfortable with that. And if you if you want to have a foot in the property market, then by all means you need, you need to do that because this, this is not what that is. It's not capital speculation. and. Yeah, and that's, you know, everyone has to make that decision for themselves because that's the reality. It, it, you know, probably will go up. Maybe it will crash. Who knows? And I think Claire started this whole thing by saying just have a, have a crack, you know, and it's, it's, it's um, you know, just start small, you know, get, get someone, you got a spare room, then try to find someone who with, of like mind to, to, to rent in there and, have, you know, suck it and see, see what it's like. I mean, get into community, get into it slowly. Because some people they think they're better at community than than they, than, they, than they are, you know, than they than they than they actually are. So like it's it's not easy. It's not easy, and and personalities and all. Yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of barriers. There's a lot of difficulties. But, but I also like to say yeah. something about the finance. You no, know, so one thing um, I was thinking about when I was um, living in a flat was that if I bought a flat, um, you know, so I'd saved up one hundred seventy thousand um, dollars, and if I bought a flat that was worth four hundred thousand. Um, and then a year later, it was worth 270000 because there's too many flats and they all slumped down. Then basically my life savings is gone. The rest is the mortgage. So I still have to pay the bank back, but my, my money is just, it's just gone, right? It doesn't exist anymore because of the value of the property. Um, and, you know, and that would seem to be a real threat years ago um, because there was too many flats. You know, now things have changed. But um, one of the things I liked about this is you put the money in and you know you get the same out, and maybe that that's in weekly payments, which is essentially like <laughs> your retirement fund. You know, the organisation pays you over time the hundred seventy thousand dollars in you know two hundred dollar instalments for however many years. But you're going to get the money back. It's not going to be worth nothing because of the drop in the housing market. 
And, you know, no one knows what the future is. I'm not saying, of course, that the housing market will drop or go up, but, you know, that speculation has, has been cause for lots of people to get very, very wealthy and, and lots of other people to lose out in the system. And basically just having a steady state um, financial situation brings someone like me more certainty that my money won't be lost um, on an overpriced flat. So um, some people ask about um, resources. I'm just putting that up there and a couple of other people did as well. Creating a life together by dying a leaf Christian is like the Bible of intentional communities. If you're going to start a community, you must read that. It's very, very good. Um, Sacred Economics, brilliant by Charles Eisenstein. That's on, available on the internet um, on, um, uh, on Gift Economy as well. I've just put up ic.org. That's intentionalcommunity.org, ecovillage dot org as well now right, that's jen that's jen uh, global eco village network these are really really important um stuff to have a look at you know we're not robinson crusoe we're not the first on the scene there's a lot of people that's gone before us um there are there are communities around here around australia that have been going for 50 years you know we le we can learn a lot about this now we really encourage you if you're going to do a community to get involved in Gen and 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 foundation of intentional communities, these sort of things. We, yeah, we, come we, and visit us. Come, stay yeah, for a week. Yeah, stay yeah, for two weeks. That's right. Yeah. So um, so this is you know it's it's there's lots of you know I, both of those eco um, both of those websites ic.org and, and ecovillage.org have good jet databases as well. Um, there are a lot more communities that aren't on there because some of them don't want to be found. Um, but um, the ones that do want to be found will be on there. You know, have a visit, have a look, have a keep talking. It's an exciting. Um, there, Jason's put something as well, as well. Um, they've just updated that. Gen Australia have just updated their website. It's, it's really, really good. So mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's an exciting, um, um, exciting movement. It it's it answers so so many questions that our society is asking. You know, if 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 money. Um, and busyness um, fix pr fixes problems. Then we would we would have no problems now. Like we, we've done a lot of busyness, we've done a lot of money, you know, in our world. And got to think outside the square. This, this is what we need. You know, we we need regenerate. We need cultural regeneration. We need social regeneration. We need e ecological re regeneration and economic regeneration. And that's what Gen Australia or Gen Gen. Um, they, they have this beautiful framework that talks about those areas of regeneration. So, well, we just got two minutes. Thank you so much, every everybody. And we'll give Tony away. <laughs> so, if any, so if anybody, good luck. Good luck. Yes. Solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, like, obviously, those in Queensland come and visit us. Um, yeah, and and uh, those those yeah, keep keep the conversation going. We'll be here again next month. And um, yeah, so it's a, bit, it's a lot of people online, so it's hard to answer everybody everybody's questions. But yeah, thank feel you free to much. email us if you have more questions. Andrew's very good at responding. <laughs> uh, well, just quickly, Andrew, can can I do uh, arrange have a meeting with you someday, just to sort of run through what steps that we need to take to yeah. satisfy your criteria for bringing us in under your umbrella, uh, yeah. so, so we know what direction to go and, and you know what building materials are satisfactory all yeah. those type of you know Perfect. The, the nuts and bolts kind of of, of, the, of the direction yeah no problem um and put your email on the side uh, we do this as a gift economy as well if you'd like to to um contribute to some some cash our way um, obviously, I spend a lot, a lot of time on on emails more than I want to, <laughs> and that's why we started doing this because it was just too much to to start talking to people individually. Um, but um, if you if you wouldn't mind sending that sending your emails through, and um, yeah, I'll invite you to to um, uh, to contribute financially. So that's fantastic. But um, it's gift economy, so a gift is also Do you want to nothing. The account in and people can. Um, I try. And if you want me to put, the, I'll do the count right now, if you like. Um, yeah, it would be big help to us being sustainable as an organisation, and that would be great if you can, if you can. And obviously, if you can't, it's a total gift to you. And I hope that everyone is able to create the eco village of their dreams. <laughs> there's our, there's our, there's our count. Yes, yeah, so the answer is definitely yes. Fiona's partner. What's that? Is that Fiona's partner who had that strong accent? <laughs> No. Who was just talking then? <laughs> found this. Was that you who was talking to us? I'd like to just say thank you so much. You're both so inspiring.
It's oh. lovely listening to it all again for the third time. <laughs> oh. really? No, truly, I've just loved this last hour. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's very touching. And thank you because I love talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite things to talk about. I just want to say thank you as well. Like, um, yeah, it's really good to hear about all this um, just to get some clarity on different aspects of it and really appreciate your time very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, same here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch for sure. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. Very good. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you. That was great. Bye. Thank you.